It is our favorite time of the week again. Time for hashtag Rise and Cues, where we answer your questions. All right, question number one. What do we got, Sagar? All right, let's throw it up there. Do you think the media will use the Kamala Pence debates to distract from Biden's performance against Trump? That's a great question, Lucas. I, uh, I'm not entirely sure. There's only one vice presidential debate. Overall, it never gets any real press. It gets like a two-day press cycle, right? Except Sarah Palin I was just gonna versus say, Biden. That yeah. was the only, and because Sarah Palin was uh, special, I guess we could leave she, it with she that. Was, yeah. yeah, I mean, she, yeah, she was such an interesting character, we'll just say. Right. And so, yeah, people were fascinated by the, can I call you Joe, the whole thing. Right. Um, I mean, if it's convenient for them, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> of course, right. they, like, if it's convenient, they will. And listen, Kamala when she is really prepared, mm -hmm. when she has a chance to really like lock down and have her answers ready for every possible scenario, she does a very good job. So in the first debate, when she was like thoroughly had all her things locked and loaded and that little girl was mean, whatever, she she really did a good job. And I'll never forget the next morning, I was like, wow, that was like, that was way better than I expected based on some other interviews I'd seen. Next morning, she went on one of the morning shows and I was watching the interview and I was like, is this the same yeah, person? Yeah, fell apart. Because right. when she's off the cuff and not practiced and prepared, she is just not nearly the same performer. And it makes sense with the history of being a prosecutor. If you're a prosecutor, you sort of, when you're in control, and she also in that first debate, she wasn't taking incoming, so she didn't have to sort of think on her feet that way. When you're in control, you're setting the pace. She's good in that scenario. In the Senate hearing, she's good in that scenario, asking questions, grilling people. So I think there's a good chance she will actually perform well in this de debate because she has a chance to prepare for it. And Pence is sort of a conventional player. That's in what that I was going to say. If, if, if what I would actually love to see, I'd pay to see, is Kamala v. Trump. Because I don't think she would be able to oh, prepare I don't think she could for somebody for who's unconventional. Yeah. Right. For somebody like Trump who could bring anything. Against Pence, it's very, you know, conventional versus conven conventional Republican, conventional Democrat. The two kind of go at each other. Um, I expect Hillary lines like trumped up trickle down oh my to God. return. I'm going to kill myself. You know the happens. media, though. It'll yeah. be like Amy Klobuchar after every yes. day debate. Oh, yeah. my God. Amy was she so amazing. She shook with confidence. Yeah. <laughs> shook with confidence. I'm shook. Thinking about it again. All right, question All right. number two. What do we got? Do you guys believe a third party will ever emerge that can compete with the Republicans <laughs> and the Democrats? All right, this is a subject of a lot of hot debate, especially on the left. And mm. I tend to be of the view that the better approach is to take over. The yes. more likely and practical approach is to take over one of the major parties, which we have seen done effectively in recent history, which Trump sort of did and then ended up just being co-opted by the same old Republican right. forces, but that path was available to him as well. But it showed it could be done. It showed yeah. it could be done. Bill Clinton did it to the Democrats in a really terrible way back in the 90s. The Tea Party sort of did something similar with Republicans, sure. kind of. But anyway, yeah. there's more models there than actually having a third party um, come into being and be a real competitor just because of the structure of yeah, the way our electoral look, It's about the structure. It's about, it's always easier. Look, the cult thesis of the show right now is that both parties are not serving the needs, interests, wants of the majority of the American people. So turn your party into the vehicle which does that. And people should really understand, what does it actually take to kill a party and then make the reemergence of another one? The last time it actually happened was the destruction of the Whig Party mm -hmm. and the emergence of the Republican Party right. in the 1860 election. It took slavery. It actually took an issue as divisive as slavery in order to say, no, this Democrat Whig thing doesn't work. Not anymore. working out. There, we don't really have something similar. Well, so, so um, we had Thomas Frank on the show yeah. this week. He's phenomenal. Right. The book's phenomenal. Um, it's called The People, Comma, No. And in it, he writes about the history of the Populist Party. Mm -hmm. And their greatest successes came in the South from a sort of fusion like with the Republican right. ticket. And so it was a similar, they were able to, to pressure Republicans a certain, they were able to join forces. There was a little window where they were actually able to join like poor white and poor black mm -hmm. farmers, sharecroppers together. And then they basically get destroyed by the bourbon elite Democrats who appeal to like right. racial solidarity over class solidarity, the story of America in a nutshell there. But anyway, the point is that their greatest successes came from pressuring and teaming up with Republicans yeah. um, in the South and other places. So I think that's the model. All right, All right. question number three. How would Sagar react to Republicans rehabilitating the image of Hillary in 10 question. years? 
A way that Democrats have remade George W. Bush. Oh, man. I would, as I was telling Crystal whenever we saw this, there's a meme of a war, I think he's like a Serbian war criminal who drinks a vial of poison after he's been convicted in the International Criminal Court. That's what it would be me drinking some poison and being like, no! You know what the worst part is? That's probably going to happen. That crap yeah. will totally, if, yeah. if ever. They're like, even Hillary support. And I'm like, no! I mean, that, we're against Hillary. It totally yeah. could happen. Because if in a future, if there was a leftist candidate yeah, or, that right. took over the Democratic, if that actually happened. If Bernie was president, that's what would happen. 100%. Right. Hillary would be joining forces yes. with, you know, Nicole Wallace and all of the people that she's already joined forces yeah, with. They right. just would switch teams to the other side and Sagar would oh, be drinking that vial of poison, yes, apparently. That's right. <laughs> Load, loading up that poison. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll have more content for you later.